fingerprinting's done. How a pizza's made or how a rainy sky paints a rainbow with the sun. Well, we can show you ways to find the answers for yourself. Using stuff right from your shell. And with remote control, you control the action. Stop and go. Having fun with my first step by step activity video. Welcome to my first music video. In this video, we'll show you how to make all kinds of fascinating musical instruments from everyday materials that are easy to find. There are 10 projects to try and they're all easy to follow and fun to do. At the beginning of each project, we will show you all the materials or ingredients you will need. Make a list of these things so you can gather them together before you start. Use the pause button on your video recorder to give you time to write everything down. Making things can be messy, so put on an apron before you start anything. Safety is very important, so be careful when you use scissors. And when you've finished, of course, don't forget to put everything away, clean up any mess, and wash your hands. You can make really interesting sounds with very simple instruments. Let's start by making some shakers. Here are the things you will need. Aluminum cans, small boxes, tins, and plastic cups some paper clips, gravel, buttons, lentils and rice, tissue paper and a rubber band, a pencil and some gift ribbon, some colored paper, colored adhesive tape, a tube of glue and small scissors, poster paints, a paintbrush and some clear varnish, and a pair of crimping scissors. And this is what you do. Start by decorating an empty can. Wind some colored tape round each end of the can so the edges overlap, like this. Then glue on some large diamonds of colored paper. And glue some slightly smaller diamonds in a different color on top of them. Do this all the way around the can. Now take some paper clips and drop them into the can. Pull the ring round to close up the hole. And then give the can a shake. Try giving it a beat. Doesn't it make a good sound? Here's another idea. Decorate a small box, then drop a handful of gravel into it and close the lid. Try shaking it from side to side. This one makes quite a different sort of noise. What about this one? Put some lentils into a small plastic cup. Then cover it with a circle of tissue paper and fasten it tightly over the cup with a rubber band. There. Now try shaking it. It sounds just like maracas. Here's another idea. Wrap some colored tape around one end of a pencil, like this. Keep winding it round until the tape is about three quarters of an inch thick. Then push the pencil through the hole at the end of a ribbon container and wind more tape around it beneath the container to hold the pencil in place. Now take some gift ribbon, wind it all the way down the pencil in a spiral, and tape down the ends. Take a handful of beads and put them into the container. Glue the two containers together and glue a strip of gift ribbon over the seam to cover it.
and shake it. Here's another shaker. Two yogurt containers glued together with a spoonful of rice inside. And another one. A small decorated tin with some buttons inside. Try out all the sounds you can make with your collection of shakers. Shake them softly, then hard, and see how you can change rhythms. Can you shake them in time to different tunes? How about some more dramatic instruments to shake? In this project, you can find out how to make some really professional looking tambourines. Here are the things you will need. A baking ring about 9 inches in diameter. Petroleum jelly. Modeling clay some newspaper, wallpaper paste and a brush, poster paints and a paintbrush, clear varnish and a pair of scissors, some big and small washers, two kebab sticks, some embroidery thread, eight steel bells, and some colored ribbons. And this is what you do. Spread a thick layer of petroleum jelly all the way around the outside of the baking ring with your finger. Then take some small pieces of torn up newspaper. Brush them with wallpaper paste. And stick them to the baking ring. In case you didn't know, this technique is called paper mache. Make sure that the pieces of paper overlap each other so there aren't any gaps. Paste the newspaper all the way around the baking ring and continue until the layers of newspaper are about a quarter of an inch thick. Leave it to dry for two days. Then carefully ease it off the baking ring. and trim all the way round the edges with a pair of scissors. Now take some more pieces of newspaper, brush them with paste, and stick them down over the edges of the paper ring, then leave it to dry again. To make another sort of tambourine, stick four small pieces of modeling clay around the baking ring before you paste the newspaper to it. When the newspaper is dry, peel the modeling clay off and it will leave holes in the paper mache. Now thread three washers onto a short piece of painted kebab stick and paste the stick across one of the holes with paper mache. the same thing with the other holes in the tambourine. Now you can paint the tambourines. Do the inside of the rings first and let them dry. Then do the outsides. When the paint is completely dry, paint over the top of them with clear varnish. Now thread each bell onto a piece of embroidery thread. Like this. Tie the thread. Then tie it round the tambourine. Fasten it with a knot and snip off the ends. Cut some pieces of ribbon and tie two different colored pieces around each bell. There. Do this all the way around the tambourine. To play the tambourine, all you have to do is shake it. Listen to the bells jingle. Once you've decorated the other tambourine, try shaking it and beating it against the palm of your hand, like this. 
two tambourines. Don't they look great? Why not make both of them and try them out? Now for the heartbeat of any band or orchestra. In this project, we'll show you how to make some fantastic drums out of cookie tins and flower pots and a whole range of different drumsticks. First, some side drums. Here are the things you will need. Different shaped cookie tins, some giant balloons, colored paper, a tube of glue, colored adhesive tape, a pair of scissors, and some drapery cord. And this is what you do. Cut out a strip of colored paper long enough to go round the cookie tin and spread glue over the back of it. Then stick the piece of paper all the way around the tin like this, smoothing it down as you go. Now cut out some squares of colored paper and glue one to the tin so it looks like a diamond. Cut out some more squares of paper in another color and stick one next to the first square. Glue squares all the way around the tin. Then finish decorating it with crisscross stripes of narrow tape. Now, cut the top off of a giant balloon. Stretch the balloon right over the top of the cookie tin. And tape the edges down all the way around the tin, like this. Then take the drapery cord and tape it to one side of the drum. If you use tape the same color as some of the diamonds, it won't show up. Do the same thing at the other side of the drum. There! A real drum! Now let's make a tom-tom. Here are the things you will need. Two plastic flower pots, some white cotton muslin, 16 feet of gold cord, and a needle. And this is what you do. Stand one of the flower pots upside down on the cloth and draw around it to make a circle. Then draw another circle three quarters of an inch out from the first one. And a third circle three quarters of an inch out again. And cut out the largest circle. Cut slits all the way around the edge of the circle, as far in as the middle circle. Glue the outer circle and fold the edges in, like this. Now cover each flower pot in colored paper. Use a different color for each pot. Then stand one flower pot on top of the other and tape them together with adhesive tape. Wind it round several times to hold the pots firmly in place. Mark 16 spots all around the circle with the pencil. Watch carefully and you will see how to space them out evenly. Then push the point of the pencil through the spots to make 16 holes. Now thread a needle with the gold cord and sew it in and out of the holes right around the circle of cloth, leaving the two ends free.
then put the circle of cloth over the top of one of the flower pots. Tie the ends of the cord together and pull them tight to hold the cloth in place. Then tie the ends in a knot. Do the same thing with the other flower pot. Then lace the two drum skins together by threading cord in a zigzag between the stitches around them. Pull the ends of the cord until both drum skins are really tight. Then tie the ends together in a knot. Now put some glue on one drum skin and spread it all over with your finger. Then do the same to the other drum skin. Now tug the zigzag strings again to pull the drum skins tighter and tie the ends of the cord in a firm knot. There, a tom-tom. Doesn't it look good? To play the drums, you must have some drumsticks. And here are the things you will need. Chopsticks, kebab sticks, and large knitting needles. Some colored felt. Cotton. Some string. Corks. Some wooden beads. Plastic drinking straws. Clear varnish, poster paints, and a paintbrush. Tape, scissors, and a tube of glue. And this is what you do. Once you've decorated the sticks, Take a chopstick and push a painted cork onto the end of it. For this one, take another chopstick and wrap some short split pieces of drinking straws around one end. Wind a piece of sticky tape around them a few times to hold them in place. Then wind some more tape around them really tightly a little higher up. How about this one? A wooden bead on the end of a chopstick. Here's another one made with a large cork that's been painted and varnished. What about a double-ended beater? Fix some wooden beads onto the end of a kebab stick and then roll a narrow triangle of felt around the other end. For a big mallet, put some cotton on a square of felt Stand a knitting needle on it and fold the edges of the felt up over the cotton. Then wind some string tightly around the felt to hold it in place. Tie the ends together in a knot. And trim them. and fluff the edges of the felt out a little. Six different drumsticks. The best way to play the side drum is with two drumsticks like this. Try making different shaped drums and beating them with the same drumstick. What about a cork mallet? And here's the felt one. Now the bead beater. What a wonderful sound. To play the tom-tom, hold it in the crook of your arm and beat it with your hand. Or try a softer sound, 
with the straw drumstick. Try out as many drums as you can and experiment with the different sounds and rhythms you can make. In this project, we're going to show you how to make some guiros. This is what people in South America call instruments that they scrape to make music. Here are the things you will need. A kebab stick, some small colored beads, a cork, a big bead, colored ribbons, a small plastic water bottle, a plastic plant label, one yard of cord, a tube of glue, poster paints and a paintbrush, and some clear varnish. And this is what you do. Push the pointed end of the skewer through the middle of two colored ribbons. Then push a painted cork onto the skewer just above the ribbons. And thread small beads onto the skewer below the ribbons. A red one, a yellow one, a blue one, and so on. When there is only space for one more bead, glue the end of the stick. Then push a bigger bead onto it to hold all the beads in place. That's it! A bead guido! It looks a bit like a maypole, doesn't it? To make a scraper, glue a bead onto the end of a kebab stick, like this, and scrape it up and down along the guido to play it. It makes a good sound, doesn't it? Now for a bottle guiro. Start by painting the water bottle with poster paints. Paint each ridge on the bottle a different color and be careful not to let the colors run into each other. Now take the cord and wind it around the top groove of the bottle. Glue the end down like this. Wind it all the way down the bottle and glue the other end neatly in place. Then varnish the bottle. You can play it with a scraper made from a plant label with cord wound around the end. So there are two different kinds of guiros. Try scraping them fast, then slowly, to see how you can vary the rhythm. In this project, we will show you how to make some wonderful chiming hanging bells and a handbell out of ordinary terracotta flower pots. Here are the things you will need. Some terracotta flower pots, poster paints and a paintbrush, cotton cord, a pencil, colored adhesive tape, a pair of scissors, some string, and a wooden bead. And this is what you do. Start by painting the flower pots with poster paints. Use bright colors. And add some spots when the paint is dry. Now take a long piece of thick cord and thread it through the hole in the bottom of the flower pot. Tie a knot at the end of the cord inside the flower pot. Then pull the cord tight and tie another knot about one foot above it. Thread another flower pot onto the cord and keep tying knots and threading flower pots onto them in the same way.
a wonderful chain of hanging bells. Beat each bell in turn with a bead beater to see how they chime. Or try a cork mallet. Or one like this. Try rattling the beater inside the bell. Now strike each one in turn. A peal of bells. And here's a hand bell made from a flower pot. The bead has been threaded onto some string and taped to a pencil. The pencil has been pushed through the flower pot and is held tightly in place with tape wound around it. Why not collect lots of old flower pots in different shapes and sizes and try making these bells yourself? In the next project, you can find out how to make a xylophone out of colored pencils and a triangle out of long bolts. Here are the things you will need. Four long bolts, two and one half yards of colored cord, embroidery thread, a large bead, a tube of glue, eight colored pencils and a pencil sharpener, some sheets of cardboard, some felt, poster paint and a paintbrush, and a pair of scissors. And this is what you do. Cut out two strips of cardboard, eight and one half inches by one and three quarter inches, and cut eight notches along the top edges and one slit at each end. Then paint the white side of the cardboard. Cut out two more strips of cardboard, one five inches by one and three quarter inches, and the other six inches by one and three quarter inches, both with slits at each end, and paint these as well. Slot them together like this to make a frame, with the notch pieces of cardboard facing each other. Then cut out two strips of felt about three-eighths of an inch wide and one foot long. Spread glue along the notched edges of the frame. And glue the strips of felt to them. That's right. Push the felt right down into the notches. Now sharpen the pencils so that each one is a little shorter than the next. And lay them across the frame in order of size, starting with the longest one and going down to the shortest one. To play the xylophone, hit it with a wooden bead beater. Can you hear the different notes the pencils make? Now let's make a triangle. For the handle, glue the ends of some pieces of red and blue cord to the end of the bolt. Then wind them both all the way around and glue the other ends down. Now tie a piece of embroidery thread to one end of the handle and tie it to the second bolt. Then do the same at the other end of the handle with another bolt. And tie the bottom ends of the bolts together loosely with a wooden bead threaded between them.
Make a beater by gluing some cord around one end of a bolt. Hold the triangle by the handle and strike it. See if you can play a tune on the xylophone. Or try making triangles with different size bolts to see if they sound different. How about making some instruments you can blow? In this project, you can find out how to make a set of pan pipes and a wonderful slide whistle, all out of plastic tubing. Here are the things you will need. Five feet of plastic tubing, a wooden skewer, a bead, some white cardboard, some ribbon, a tube of glue, adhesive tape, some modeling clay, poster paint and a paintbrush, clear varnish, and a pair of scissors. And this is what you do. Cut the plastic tubing into 12 pieces, each one a little bigger than the next. Then cut some narrow strips of colored tape and wind a strip around each pipe in a spiral, like this. Then lay the pipes down in order of size on a piece of colored adhesive tape and wrap the ends of the tape up over them to hold them together. Now take a strip of cardboard with the ribbon glued to it and spread the glue along the back of it. Then glue the cardboard over the tape to cover it and make it stronger. Next, roll some pieces of modeling clay into small balls. You'll need 12 of them all together. And stick one into the end of each pipe. There! To play the pan pipes, hold them against your bottom lip and blow across the top of them. It might take a bit of practice. Now let's make the whistle. First cut a piece of plastic tubing. It needs to be about 8 inches long. Now let's decorate the tube. Wind some colored tape around each end of the tube. Then cut some small squares of colored tape and stick them here and there all the way around the tube. Paint the skewer and then let the paint dry. And varnish it to make it shiny. Dab a little glue onto the end of a big bead, then push one end of the skewer into it. Now wind tape around the other end of the skewer. It needs to be just thick enough to fit into the tube. And push it down into the tube. To play the whistle, hold it against your bottom lip and blow. And push the plunger up and down at the same time. Now there are your pipes and whistles. Practice playing the pipes and see if you can play a tune on them. In this project, you can find out how to make a really entertaining wind instrument. A bubble organ, which you play by blowing bubbles. Here are the things you will need. Some glass bottles, poster paints and a paintbrush, clear varnish, a jug of water, and some drinking straws. And this is what you do. Wind a piece of tape around a bottle four inches from the bottom.
stick down the end so that it overlaps. Then paint a wavy line all the way around the bottle beneath the tape, like this. Now paint some colored circles above the tape. These are going to be the bubbles. Let the circles dry, then scratch a little paint off each one with the point of a pencil to make it look more like a bubble. And carefully peel the tape off the bottle to leave a flat-topped wavy line. Paint the bubbles and wavy line with a coat of varnish. Pour water into the bottle until it reaches the level of the wavy line. Do the same with the other bottles, making the water level three quarters of an inch lower on each one. Then put a drinking straw in each bottle. and blow into them to make bubbles. Can you hear which ones make the highest note and which ones make the lowest note? Why not try playing a simple tune on your bubble organ? In this project, you can find out how to make some string instruments that you can pluck. A banjo made from an ice cream tub and some harps out of ordinary boxes. Let's make the banjo first. Here are the things you will need. A plastic ice cream tub, a piece of wood, one and a half feet by an inch and a half, a giant balloon, a pair of scissors, adhesive tape and thumbtacks, poster paints and a paintbrush, clear varnish, some cardboard and glue, eight brass eye hooks, and 10 feet of fishing line. And this is what you do. Cut two H shapes in opposite sides of the plastic tub. Bend back the flaps of each H, then push the piece of wood through both holes. and pin the flaps of plastic to the wood with thumbtacks. Cut the end off the balloon, then stretch the balloon out to cover the ice cream tub. And stick the edges down all the way around the tub with a piece of tape. Now paint the piece of wood. Let the paint dry, then wrap a piece of tape around it where it joins the ice cream tub. Paint patterns on the wood to decorate it. and paint stripes for the fret marks. Wait for the paint to dry, then varnish it. Now screw an arc into one end of the piece of wood. Screw three more eye hooks in a row next to it. Then screw the other four eye hooks into the other end of the piece of wood, like this making sure you have enough room to turn them. Cut four pieces of fishing line, about a foot and a half long, 
and tie them from one set of eye hooks to the other. Then make a bridge out of a piece of cardboard glued into a triangle shape and slip it under the strings close to one set of the eye hooks. Make another bridge and slip it under the strings close to the other set of the eye hooks. To tune the strings, screw the top eye hooks further into the wood to make the strings tighter. Keep plucking them to check which notes they make. To play the banjo, all you have to do is strum it. Easy, isn't it? Now let's make some box harps. Here are the things you will need. Some boxes with lids, colored rubber bands in different sizes, some colored paper, some cardboard, a tube of glue, a pair of scissors, poster paints and a paintbrush, and some clear varnish. And this is what you do. Cut a hole in the top of a box lid, then put the lid back on the box. Spread some glue about one half inch in from the edge of the lid. And glue on a bridge made of cardboard. Now stretch four rubber bands right over the box and bridge, like this. You can tune them by pulling them to make them tighter or looser. Now pluck the strings. Here's a larger box harp which has more rubber bands around it. Doesn't it sound good? Why not make the banjo and harps yourself and have fun playing them? In this project, you can find out how to make two different kinds of horns. A hosepipe horn that looks like a French horn, and a didgeridoo, an instrument made by Australian Aborigines. Here are the things you will need. A piece of hose, about two and a half feet long. A funnel, a pencil, some adhesive tape, a pair of scissors, poster paints and a paintbrush, some clear varnish, a long cardboard tube, some colored paper, and a tube of glue. And this is what you do. Paint the funnel with poster paint. And when the paint is dry, varnish it. Then push the funnel into one end of the hose and wind tape tightly around them to stick them together. Make a large loop in the hose pipe and fasten it into place with a piece of tape. Then put the pencil between the two coils of the hose pipe and tape it into place to give the horn a better shape. Decorate the horn with stripes of colored tape. Don't forget the funnel. There! 
add some more stripes in a different color. Doesn't it look magnificent? To play the horn, you have to blow a raspberry sound through the mouthpiece. Now for the didgeridoo. Cut out a piece of paper big enough to cover the tube and glue around the edges of it. Roll the tube up in the paper to cover it. And smooth the edges down. Now decorate the tube with a stripe and some spots. Now try blowing the didgeridoo. Do it as though you were blowing a raspberry down it. Once you've mastered blowing the hornpipe and the didgeridoo, try making different sounds on them by blowing softly and more loudly. It's really quite easy. That brings us to the end of this video. Why not start collecting materials for one of the instruments right away? Did you ever wonder how fingerprinting's done? How a pizza's made or how a rainy sky meets a rainbow with the sun? Well, we can show you ways to find the answers for yourself. Using stuff right from your shell And with remote control You control the action Stop and go Having fun with my first My first step by step Activity videos Discover a whole new world of fun with my first activity video series Among the many titles you will want to explore are my first cooking video. My first science video. My first nature video. And of course, my first activity video. Also, if you'd like to join the Sony Kids Music and Video Fan Club and receive a free newsletter and catalog, please send us your name, address, age, the name of this tape, and where you bought it. Write to us at Sony Kids Music and Video, P.O. Box 4450, Mail Drop 514, New York, New York, 10101.